we're going to show multiple ways to do this, okay? And this, it's funny, in our evolution series, there's so much controversy about this. You, a bunch of people put negative comments on a thing that says it's a trick or a different way of doing it. And, uh, oh man, YouTube's free, people. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going to do three different ways to show you how we can uh, get the cylinder installed over the piston. So, first off, we're going to do it the standard OEM, typical way that we see is with a ring compression tool. And uh, Brock and I are going to do this. I just wanted to show something on the tool here. Do you see where this says bottom? Yeah. So this is the size of the cylinder that it can compress. What this is for, where this is commercially made, is for, i back the camera up and we'll, we don't have an example here, but on an automotive block, the top of the cylinder head, you would compress the piston like this, and you're going to push the piston down into the bore, okay, of the, like, uh, like I said, like a V8 block or whatnot, okay? Well, since we're not using it that way, we're installing the piston you know, into the cylinder this way, does that make sense where you want to turn this bottom word upside down? Because that's what's going to go in. So the other thing before we cover this up, I want you to realize here is that, do you see the distance from the top of the piston to the first ring? Okay, we want to actually let that be exposed. We don't want the ring to pop out of the tool, but I'll show you why here in a second, why this is a nice advantage here. So Brock's going to go ahead and set this up like he has before. Our ring gap's already put in the right position. You have to watch our previous video for that. And can you hold that up and show them what's going on? Okay. This is pretty cool. It's got a, just a ratchet on there. And then uh, releases, opens back up. Do you need to weld that on there? No. No, we just want to compress those rings. Anytime you got an extra set of hands, just take advantage of it. All right, okay, so you see this little space that we've left up? A lot of people put this flush, and what happens is the bottom of the cylinder doesn't have what we call a lead in or a, basically a place to rest. So with this on here, watch what happens. Now, since we're trading here, you're going to support the bottom of the piston. You notice he's just going to let the tool hang there. There you go. Okay? And watch, look at this. The weight of the cylinder is now resting on there. Can you imagine if I had that flush? What would happen is it would not be able to find the piston. It wants to kind of walk around, make it a little more difficult. Okay? So now Brock's going to just simply take the rubber mallet, lightly just tap around. Notice how he's kind of bouncing from corner to corner? Yep. Okay. Just about had the tool pop out, and I'm going to bet you can see the camera on that side. The tool just about popped out because it, it hit right here. So hold this up. Right. We don't want to scratch that chrome either, so you think it would be a good idea to put a rag under here? Yeah. Let's see what that looks like. Now that you're down there quite a ways and you think you're finished, stop. You could just simply do this number here. And what I like to do is get the tool to just pop off and then we know that we're fully on there and life's gonna be good. All right, that's one way to do it. All right, I'm gonna show you another way that us metric folks uh, like for doing four wheelers and dirt bikes and different things. And for the record, this is the most hated method by Harley Davidson engine builders and riders, apparently according to our YouTube comments. So I'm going to do it again. <laughs> All right, this is another way to do it. And I have to be intentional on a couple of things here before we get started. First off, what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the piston in the cylinder. Okay, and you'll see here in a second why that is. But since I'm flipping things, I need to make sure that I'm putting the piston in the right direction because of our arrow. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is directional. So I need to go back up here. I know that this is this way. So if I take my cylinder and piston, I want to do this. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so here's a method where I could take and simply use a couple little screwdrivers. And we have that lead in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find the ring gap. It's right there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push this on. Somebody ought to time me. And where this is nice, a lot of times, is we just don't have 
the compressor. This is really a garage method. See how fast that ring went in? So what I'm doing is get, I'm putting a little pressure here. Can you see how I'm tipping? Okay, so I've got part of the ring installed. You can see where the other side's hanging out here. Yep. <clears throat> I want to go ahead and get that gap started so that it can't pop out. Does that make sense? Okay, now that I'm started here, okay, you can see my ring sticking out. Yep. This is the whole problem of what's happening no matter what. All right, see how that's in? One minute, ten seconds. One minute, ten seconds talking and screwing around here. All right, so here's the next part of it. Okay, no, no specialty tools. Is I need my wrist pin, and what I want to do is I want to get this piston just. Okay, do you see that relief? Yep. Okay, that has to be higher than the the bore. All right, you see that now? Yep. Okay, watch this. So let's see, I have a clip in on this side. I'm going to go ahead, this looked familiar from earlier, Jacob? Yes. Getting the pin installed. What I'm going to do, I want to try and do as much work as I can in here. Okay, now I don't want Brock's help, okay? I want to show you this, that I should be able to do this on my, on my own. And then you would, I could pop my sir clip in, okay? You with me? Mm -hmm. And then. Oh, it's so terrible. This is the dumbest thing I've ever been building motors for 30 years, and I'd never do that. Let's talk about Because I've really always wanted to address the, this, the ton of comments. Why might this method be beneficial? You make the hands Right there, brother. Not having extra hands. You know, doing some of these other methods, we, we need to be a little more careful. We're trying not to scratch things. Uh, or not having the tool. A lot of the things, I mean, half of us turn to YouTube to learn how to do something because we're trying to cheat doing it, quote unquote, the right way because we don't have a tool or a compressor or something else. Does that make sense? I don't know about you, but for me, I like doing this because I just have a real good feel to it. I feel like I'm completely in control. When I'm working on the bench here and I walk the you know, piston in, I just feel like I'm in control. It's a little, a little risque, I guess you could say. When you go to put the clip in, you can't bump the cylinder and you're also dancing on a really fine line like you saw in the picture that that oil control ring is just ready to pop out. Just a method, that's all it is. So that, the third way, Go here. I'm going to move the piston down. You're going to see here. I want to actually get this down a little bit because I'm going to, it's going to take a couple people. So, since this is your motor, why don't we go ahead now? All right, you choose your weapon. It's the two of you guys, screwdrivers. And if you're going to be the third one, you're going to be on this side. Okay. So, you guys are going to push the rings in manually and you got to communicate on where the gap is. Okay, that's your, and this is your engine, so I want you to lead it. I want you to say, hey, where's the gap? This top one, it's over here. You're going to try and tip the cylinder, you know, in with the gap in. Does that make sense? And then when you get permission, okay, from these, not until you get permission, you're the tapper. Okay. Does that make sense? Go. For many new techs, this way seems safer because you don't feel alone, you feel like you have some help and, and other people to see what's going on. But in all reality, um, this is a really good way to break a ring on installation. If someone gets ahead of the other person and you don't have good communication and they tap or push, boom, you're snapping a ring, it's going to be a bad day. So, uh, you know, we're still practicing this, practicing this skill set just so it's a way for them to understand and see how to communicate with the other mechanic and what this looks like but ultimately this is a job you really need to be able to do by yourself on your own and uh, get good at it you have to practice it do it over and over and over until you become an expert there. all right minute and a half minute and a half 
with skill, with how many people felt that was way too many hands? Like for you, of what you'd want to do, right? So next time you YouTubers want to sit and say that you don't like method number two, <laughs> All right, anyway, it's not whatever you're comfortable with. It doesn't matter how you get it in there. Let's just talk about what our big focus is. Don't break rings. I'm not going to argue that this guy, this is sweet, this is easy, it's very low risk. Uh, it's just a, a, a great tool, okay? But we like to have some fun, be creative with it. Now, you guys can all go put your motors together, and you can do any method you want. Let's get our jugs on.